Okay, so uh, if you have no questions for me, let's proceed with pivot tables. Uh, uh, it always, you know, pivot tables always appear scary and like extremely difficult, but trust me, uh, it's probably one of the easiest tools that Excel has because it, it, uh, it, it simplifies so many steps. Like you're trying to solve a problem and you, you have to do like 12 or 15 different steps in like three steps, major problems are solved in like three steps, right? So, so let's see, uh, it's better to demonstrate because you know, it's just more effective that way to understand what's going on. Um, so a few things we need to be aware of when we're working with uh, pivot tables is, your data has to have has to have headings, right? So you can see here date, region, rep. This data might be familiar to you guys because we've used it a few a few times. So you might be used to this guy's from Canada, right? Uh, so date, uh, region, rep, unit cost that has to be there. Your data has to be clean. So when I say clean, for example, consistency. So let's say uh, right here you have uh, you have Andrews here, right? Mm -hmm. Now imagine you went down here and you have Andrew for some reason. It's the same person, but maybe misspelled. Well, that's going to give you some serious problems. So you got to make sure that there's consistency in your data. Andrew, it's, if it's Andrew without the S or Andrews with the S, well, that has to be consistent. Uh, whatever you have there, you've got to have. You don't want to have deviation in your data, or else uh, Excel can help you with that. So uh, take out all your filters, just clear everything, make sure there are no filters there. Just keep it clean, no filters, all right? So two ways you can get to the uh, pivot table window or page. So click on any data here. <coughs> any data at all, and then go to insert and pivot table here. Oh. Middle school 101 Excel. You go up here on the home here and just do, you're going to see the clear option here. All right, so click on any data, insert pivot table. You're going to see this window is going to pop up. It doesn't really mean anything. Basically, it's just selecting all the uh, the range of the cells or the table. That's all, and it's going to put your info in a new worksheet. So just click OK. So when you click OK, it brings you to this sort of semi-intimidating page, which is really nothing. Uh, we'll come back here in a second. Let's see the second way of getting here. Right, it's the first way, second way of getting here. Go back to your data sheets, click on any cell, then hit Control A on your keyboard. Control A. If you're on a Mac, this is not going to work, so I'm not even going to bother. I just highlight everything. Yeah. No, 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 not highlight the whole entire screen. No, it Control work. A, just the data, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going to see a little tool, tool here that's called. Quick analysis tool. You guys see that? Yeah, I see, I see. So right here, when you select the data, click on any any cell, control A, this guy's gonna pop out here on your Windows computer. On a Mac, it'll probably be different. And you wanna go to tables and click pivot table here. Now notice what happened with this method. Excel guessed they are trying to do something. What did, what, what did they come up with here? The region. The total. Oh, exactly. It just. I gave you the answer without showing the information. Say again. I gave you like the total without showing how you got the total. Well, it just except just because maybe you're trying to let me just copy up real, real quick. Are you using that? So it tells you in Alberta, all the reps, total sales for binders, pencils, and all the reps, everything. Alberta, Ontario, Quebec. Of course, we got to figure out how do you do that. 
But that's what, that's what pivot tables do. In one click, major problem solved. So let's go, on, let's go in the origin, the, order, the previous way, so everything's clean. So go back to your data here, click on any cell, just any blank cell, insert pivot table here and click OK. We're gonna start from scratch. So click OK, and now it brings you to this mostly blank page. But notice to your right, Everything you see there in the pivot table fields is the same what you have in your data sheet. So right here, you have date, region, rep, item, unit cost. If you go to your sheet here, you can see the same columns. That's why the headings are important. All right. Um, now, something slightly annoying, every time you come up with a new pivot table, it creates sheets you know, at the bottom here. So you're gonna see, Sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, sheet four, sheet five. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, you can save what you need and get rid of the rest. Mm -hmm. All right, so back here. Now, something you should be aware of is if you click away, like click a blank cell here, all your options go away. So you've got to click back in here to get all the Excel options. There's pivot table fields, pivot table fields here. Now, what does this mean? Drop the row fields here, drop value fields here, drop column fields here. What is all this guys? So basically copy and paste all the, the fields. Never do that. <laughs> Don't do that. There's nothing to copy and paste in pivot table. Well, so rows here, drop rows, drop column, drop values. They kind of correspond to what you have at the bottom right. Columns here, rows, values. Well, what does that mean? That's demonstrated and you see. So we want to figure out uh, the sales for the reps, right? Oh. I told you guys three clicks. It's just going to be three clicks. Just click row. If we go more than three times, um, we'll, let, we'll end class early, like extra early. Extra early. Three we'll clicks. Early. So here's the first click. Um, so reps right so scroll up to reps if you need to scroll yep. click on rep and drag it down to rows oh. that's the first click okay. Okay. so you drag rep or actually if you just click on rep it should drop it into rows excel kind of intuitively figures out what you're trying to do oh yeah i got the same answer. all right so notice what's happening here notice what's happening here if you go back to your data sheet, you can see uh, Andrews, Andrews, Andrews appears many times, right? Yes. Gil, many times. Gil, 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 uh, Jardine, Jardine, Jardine. But in your pivot table, Excel summarizes everything, right? Like category, you know, like, you know, just bunches it up, which is what we want. Show me all, all the activity for Andrews, all the activity for Howard. That's what Excel does. That's what pivot table does. Uh, do. Next thing, uh, you wanna see for binders. So what is each of this guy's performance for binders, pencils, you know? So go to item and drag item to columns. That's the second clip. So you guys gonna be three, but all right. So it's gonna help us here to see Howard, what's, did Howard sell pens? How many pens? Did Kibble sell pencils? How many? Did Torbino sell binders? How many? What's the grand total of all that stuff? Mm -hmm. For some reason, mine came up as blank first. It is blank. Well, no, no, no. Like, it goes binder, pen, pencil, like, for in total. So probably you have a... Okay, so when I said clean up your data, you probably have an extra row in your data, a blank row for some reason. And it's, Excel is picking that up as a valid... Uh, valid column or something. So maybe you have an extra column. Yeah, so data has to be clean. All right, next thing, we wanna see the total here of units. So grab units and drag it to values. Grab unit here and drag to values. This is, I just actually solved so many problems. Oh, sorry, yeah. 
right? So look at this, right? Uh, uh, Morgan, you can tell from this that Morgan has no sales for buying this in pen. <laughs> you can tell that uh, Turbino total total combined units sold seven six or seven. <clears throat> you can tell that um, Howard was like the lowest. No, he was the lowest sales total. Only binders. People have it's going to have a problem with this job. Yeah, would it Kibel be the lowest? Oh, he Kibel or Kibel? Well, Kibel. Yeah, All right. Wouldn't it be what? I thought you said Howard was the lowest. Well, they're kind of well. Okay, yeah, you're right. They're kind of kind of close. No. Um. Yeah. So you can see all the steps that Excel just it saves us so much steps and time, and just solve this major problem. Powerful, right? I agree. Yeah. Okay, something else, a few more things we can do. So now this is the unit sold. Now we want to know what is the dollar amount. Like we know Andrew sold 119 uh, units of binders, but what's the dollar amount of them? Right. So we can just tweak this a little bit here. Let's get rid of some of units. So click here and remove the field. What did you put total? Pardon me? What did you put total? Yeah, we're good. That's what we want to do. So let's remove, let's remove this field first. And then you grab this field. Yep, you're on the right track. Boom, that's it. Go. So you take that field out because that's for units. And this is for, so that values box, this values box here, this area here, what it does is that's where it does all the calculations. If you click on this, uh, upside down triangle here and go to value field settings. You're going to see it can do some, it can do count, average, max, all that stuff. Yep, so. Right. So we're taking out the sum of units or payments from the total? Yep. Because what we're trying to sum the total, Haley, we're not trying to sum the, we did the units earlier. I, yeah, I'm just making sure. So. Now the problem here is all the numbers don't look like actual currency. So let's format the numbers so it looks like money, right? So we know that's money. So a few steps for that. So go back here. We want to change the values to currency. So go here, value field settings, then number format. Now you might recognize this button because we've used it a lot. Go to currency and you guys recognize this, right? Yes. You can change the currency, click OK, click OK, and that's your total in dollars and stuff. So you can tell uh, Jardine here has the most sales. I mean, pretty, pretty smooth. Uh, Gil sold $4 $4.79 for pencils. In fact, look at this. You can say all binder sales, total binder sales. Right, total pen sales, total pencil sales. So a lot of information in just a few clicks. A lot of problems solved, just a few clicks. So a lot of something that appears complicated, maybe maybe it'd be easy. Just have to remember. All right, let's see something else. Now watch this. There's a filter. You notice the filter here. So let's say I want to see just Gil, right? I don't want to see all these other people. Just show me Gil. So I'm just going to drop down rep here and on the select, select Gil here. And I can see Gil's performance, right? Gil, you know, total binder sales for Gil, pens, pencils, total, grand total. That's just Gil. If I want to see Gil and Savino, for example, drop down here. Gil and Savino, click OK. That's those two people, right? A total, well, you can see that Savino has no binders, right? No binder um, sales. So that's an option there if you want to filter. Uh, you can clear that filter. How about item? You want to see, well, let's just see. 
how these guys did with pens only, right? Just pen. We don't want to see the binders of pencils, just pen. Now, what do you notice here? Some names are missing on this list. One with filter for pen. Right there. They only. only these are the only two people that sold pens. The other guys didn't sell pens. How do we know that? Let's take out the filters again. You can see this is the pens here. There are only two reps that sold pens. No pens. I mean, only Gill and Sorvino. Uh, Morgan, Kibble, Jones, no pens for those guys. If you filter for a pencil, same thing you're going to see. A lot more people did pencil, but somebody's name is missing there. Can you guys tell? Sometimes you can use the same pivot table to do what you're trying to do. Sometimes you have to just get a new one. But here, we can just go here and what you want to do is region, right? So take out rep, just uncheck rep and check region. On rep, just uncheck that. So a lot of times it's just about knowing how to put the items in the right places, right? Um, but you, you can solve major problems that will take you so many steps in just a few steps. Okay, so here's a few questions for you guys to solve before we get out of here. Here are my questions for you. Now, you don't have to use the same people table. You can use, you can grab a new one, right? Same data, but a new people table. But I want you guys to solve these five questions. Rep with most sales, you probably know that already. Region with least sales. Sales difference in pencil and binder sales. Rep. Andrew sales in 20, 2005 and sales for units less than 50. So first question, rep with more sales. Now you don't have to use you don't have to use the same pivot table, right? You can use a new one. So I'm gonna go here and create a new one. So here's my thing. Here's my table. Oh sorry. Um, so go to inserts, pivot table, click OK. So that's a, that's a blank one, right? Uh -huh. So what do you want to do? Rep with most sales. So you grab your rep here. Rep is four here. And uh, what's the other one? Total. So total, drag total to values. Look at that. So you can tell right away, if you right, if you right click here and sort a largest to smallest, you can see right away it's Jardine. So you don't have to get stuck with the same people table trying to just tweak it, tweak it to get all the answers. You may not get all the answers from one, so you can just do it again, all right? Uh, next one is region with least sales. So same thing here, just go here, take out the rep, you want region, no rep, and least sales is right there, Quebec, all right? Next question, sales difference, pencil and binder sales, pencil and binder. So same thing here, we don't want region, we want item. So what's different here? Just to equals. Yeah. It's like, it's three is it, is it pencil on what? Pencils and binders. Pencil and binders. So it's 3,000 something. So click on B5 minus B7. There you go. 3,059. All right. Then we do the, we do the last, uh, we do the next. Rep Andrew sales in 20, 2005. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's get the reps back in here. So item no, rep yes. And then how about, uh, so the dates. So we grab date and put date down here as a row. So you can see that, um, you can see that, so Jardine's performance for 2005 is 10, 1, 8, 2, 2006. Everything's all summarized, right? Thompson is this, and Andrews is right here, 2005, 4151. Point five nine. Now here's a question you might get on the quiz. You might say, for example, for Andrews 2005, how many quarters did Andrew have? Three. You can see that, right? If you were to do this the hard way, 
it will take so many steps for you to get to this level. I mean, just to get to this point. So people say let's make it easy. And you can tell here easily that quarter four was three, three, four, thirty-two dollars. So a lot of information packed in here for just a few clicks. If there was a question about say quarter four, for example, you can tell that uh, where is it? Right here. You can tell that quarter four. Well, that's for Jardine. Uh, in the fourth quarter for Jardine, uh, it was just three months. October, November, December, right? You can tell the different numbers here. For Andrews, uh, it was quarter four for Andrews. It was only December. Only December. So if that was a question on the quiz, it would be, well, Andrews for December. I can't seem to click on Andrews. It keeps jumping around when I click on Andrew. Okay, just December right there, yep. So it looks very complicated but just a few things we have to place correctly over there, all right? So Andrew's total for 2005 is, um, is 4151. Okay, next question or last question. Sales for units less than 50. So right now it kind of summarizes all the binders, all the pens. Want to break it down by rep. So how about if we go to rep here? and say, yep, look at that. So we can see that Kibble or Kibel, <laughs> right, has 50. So remember what it says here, sales for units less than 50. So there's actually none, there's no less than 50 here. So the answer would that, that would be zero, right? Or is it true or false situation? It doesn't exist, nothing like that. So knowing how to place your different, uh, fields in just this few uh, boxes here, you can solve a whole lot of problems. All right, mm -hmm. and that's the last question there.